I'm Gary Bembridge and I want to talk about a big US cruise update. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Should we be expecting that cruises will run in and out of the US any time soon? Over the last week or so, there's been a couple of updates which suggest it's probably not the news you want to hear. There's some good news, there's some bad news. So let's unpick it and take a look at what cruises in the US can expect. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, no sale order only applies to ships that carry 250 passengers or more. So we are starting to see a couple of signs of cruising starting in a small way. So we're seeing, for example, uncruise, which runs small ships, starting their Alaska season at the end of July. There are a whole bunch of restrictions. You have to have a COVID-19 test before joining the ship, for example. There's some social distancing on board, but those cruises will be starting up. We're also seeing some river cruising starting up with the American cruise line starting up on Mississippi. So we're seeing some small signs of the small cruise ships starting to run. However, that's not the bulk of cruising. That's not what most cruisers are really interested in. They want the big ships heading out of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Port Canaveral, and all around the US, particularly heading to the Caribbean. So what exactly is happening and what is the mood music and signs there? The big cruise lines have canceled all their cruisings at the moment, at least to the middle of September. In the announcement they made, there were signs that they were indicating or suggesting that this could probably go on even longer. There's no certainty at all that cruising will be starting in the middle of September or even in October at this point in time, despite what you can go online or talk to a travel agent and book. One of the big challenges that we're facing is the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, which has a no sell order and is, has to sign off on cruise ships starting does not appear to be engaging at all or very little with the cruise industry. The cruise industry itself has not really publicly criticized the CDC and are always talking about a collaborative relationship. However, other constituents, be it travel agents, travel agent groups, some of the Wall Street analysts have really criticized the CDC for what is obviously and apparently appears to be very little connection with this, the cruise line industry to get a discussion going on how cruising can start. One of the signs of this is they haven't even completely signed off and agreed crew repatriation yet. There's still a lot of crew on board passenger ships that need to head off home. The CDC rules mean that crew cannot come on land in the United States and use commercial transport. So when cruise companies need to repatriate crew, they have to sail to other territories. So even within the last 10 days, Virgin Scarlet Lady, which was based in Miami, left Miami and sailed all the way back to Europe, to Genoa, to be able to repatriate their crew. So we're even seeing on stuff that's been going on for months, so the CDC has not worked in a way that's enabling crew to be repatriated in an easy way. Also very importantly, before the CDC will sign off their no-sale order, they have to agree the protocols with the cruise line. The current no-sale order expires at the end of July, and that will be extended because the cruise lines and the CDC have not been discussing and have not agreed a protocol for starting up again. So without a shadow of a doubt, the no-sell order is going to be extended and the key will become what date do they set for that no-sell order. So that's a doom and gloom. What is happening on the positive side? Well, the cruise lines are becoming much more organized and planning much more to push the point. One of the most significant things that's happened in the last week is Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line Group have formed a brand new advisory panel which is working on very specific, very detailed protocols and recommendations to get cruising going again. It's called the Healthy Sail Panel and consists of 11 very influential, very well connected public health and scientific advisors. It's endorsed by CLEAR, the Cruise Line Association. It has some really big heavy hitters on the team. So you have a multi-term ex-governor of Utah, who also was the Secretary of Health in the Bush administration. You also got an ex-commissioner of the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. You've also got an ex-deputy director of infectious diseases from the CDC. They have been working for a month. They do have final recommendations at the end of August, and that will feed into the proposals that the cruise line make to the CDC about cruising restarting. This is why it's I believe it's going to take a while for cruising to get going because that document's not even going to go in or be put to the CDC until way into September. They're working on four critical streams. First of those is the whole screening process in terms of getting passengers on board. So it'll be interesting to see whether testing is part of that. The second stream is the whole onboard environment, cleaning and disinfecting protocols. 
The third, which is very important and is very important also in the CDC's requirements, is a plan for people that get ill. What happens if there's an outbreak or illness on board, both in terms of how they're dealt with on board, but also the plans and processes for getting people back on land. One of the big issues the CDC has in their original documentation was they have major concerns around cruise passengers relying on needing and putting a strain on land-based or shoreside-based medical facilities. So this clearly will be addressed as part of that stream. The fourth stream, which also is a very interesting one, talks around destinations and ports. The remit of the group specifically talks about what activities will be allowed and how to control passengers once they're off the ship in an environment which might pose some risk. We've already seen some hints about where things may settle down. We've seen the cruise line executives, for example, talking about initially starting with shorter voyages, focusing very much on the local population, people that are close to ports and not having to rely on flying in. We've all seen them talking about certainly initially having lower capacity, so fewer passengers on board to enable some of the social distancing. We've seen discussion around changes to things like the buffet where they won't be self-service, they will be crew served. The EU issued a 49 page document with guidelines for the big ocean cruising ships to start sailing again. One of the most contentious issues in the EU document was around passengers aged 65 years and older. And of course that group is a very big part of the cruising population. The EU document spoke about passengers aged 65 or over having to have some kind of medical certificate or certainly some sort of medical advice and screening of their own accord before they went on a cruise. But also it spoke about how once you're on board, passengers over 65 could be separated for dining activities and even for excursions. This has caused a lot of consternation amongst people seeing that. Of course, we don't know if that's going to be the reality. In an interview with Frank Del Rio, the, who runs the Norwegian Cruise Line Group, about this he said they're going to try and avoid it, but he didn't say it's definitely not going to be part of the proposals. This is what he actually said. I'm hopeful that we will have multiple layers so that breaking up or dividing the populace of our guests into predetermined groups of age or nationality or anything else that is anyway exclusionary won't be necessary. I hope that it is some extreme measure that hardly ever has to be put in use. And that last bit is really important. So it does sound that the issue of older passengers is something that is a live issue and could become part of this whole proposal. In the United States, cruise lines are on hold. The CDC doesn't appear to yet be really engaging, but on a positive note, the cruise lines are being very assertive and aggressive about putting into place really detailed protocols that are signed off by some very influential public health and scientific independent advisors. Hopefully that will be the thing that gets this whole thing moving and gets the CN DC to engage. What do you think about cruising in the US? What do you think is going to unlock and get cruising moving in the US again? Love to hear what you think. Remember, I have loads more videos, cruise updates, cruise reviews, cruise line, and cruise tips videos. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?